Okay, so we're going to talk about earthquake damage and resonance. I already forgot my face in the wrong place, but that's okay. We'll move it up here. Um, so the idea is that there's this phenomenon known as resonance, and it's due to matching the natural frequency of an object. And it makes the amplitude of that object really big. So I wanted to show you an example. I would love to do it in class, but I don't have those in the classroom. So we're going to click here. And we're going to go to the breaking of glass. So let's watch this one first. Um, you won't hear the sound, but you should be able to see the picture. Um, but there's not any sound you really need to see. So if this is going to show a um, glass in front of a machine that is um, making a sound. I'm not sure if you can hear it. It's very loud. And if it can match the natural frequency of this glass, it will actually shatter because its amplitude will get bigger and bigger. So they're, they're using a strobe light, kind of like we did on the wave tank, to be able to make this get bigger and bigger and watch. Right, and there it goes, it breaks, right? And that's due to something called resonance. Now, this can also happen. And the Tacoma Bridge was built in Washington ago, State. Was cost of over six you don't really need to hear him. Um, and so these people are walking across this bridge. But look at what's going on. This is a concrete metal bridge. The wind is blowing through here, and it is rolling around like a roller coaster. That's a real car. This is well before, you know, you could do CGI and all that kind of stuff. So the wind just happens to hit at the natural frequency for this bridge and makes it go crazy and resonate and get this really big amplitude. People would take films of it because, you know, it was quite an amazing phenomenon. And it was quite amazing to see what it would, what it would do. Um, obviously, it did not stay. People have learned how to keep the wind from making the bridge resonate, and so we don't have this problem anymore. But resonation can actually make a bridge fall down. That's what I wanted you to see. So let's go back here. Um, you can also, you've also all experienced a swing, right? So if you go on a swing um, and you push somebody at the constant velocity of, or not, but match their frequency, right? If you push them in the wrong timing, it doesn't work. But as long as you just keep pushing them with their swing, you're going to make them go higher and higher. Which brings me to my brain transducer. Um, so you were supposed to do this um, yourselves, but obviously, case being, that's not going to happen. So uh, this is the Electromagnetic Brain Transducer um, 3000, and it's rumored to pick up brain waves. It seems to work well with second graders, but high schoolers are more skeptical. So we're going to try this. I'm going to make the screen big so you can see, and I'm going to kind of put this down so it's in front of my black sweatshirt so you can watch it. Now you notice that these three paper clips are different lengths, right? Now keep your eyes, let me see if I can get the little one to go. See how the short one is going really high right now, right? It's because I'm looking at it, right? I'm staring at it right there, right? And as I look at it, that one makes that one go. Now if I stop them, I'm going to see if I can stare at that middle one, right? I can't do it while I'm doing it, but I am looking. I just want you to know, and let's see if I can get that one to go. And you can see, how, well, no, don't have it yet. I want to get that little one to stay still, not quite. But it's not bad. The little ones are going a little crazy. But I got at least the middle one to go and not the long one. Now, watch the long one. So I'm going to stare at the long one. Yeah, I need to be a second grader to make this work better. Let's see if I can get just, just the long one. Come on, just. The long. So see how the long one's going much higher? This one over here. Oh no, it doesn't really look like it can see my face. But hang on, hang on. We're gonna get this. Make them all stop. Watch the big one. That one. Yeah, I'm still getting the middle one. I'm really good at the middle one. Let's try one more time. There we go. So the question is, what am I doing? See, the other ones are hardly moving. And that long one's going a lot. So the question is, what am I doing? Do you notice the difference between them, right? Notice that this one 
is shorter. This one is kind of a medium length and this one is a long length, right? So if I want to make them resonate and get a really big amplitude, I need them to be shaken at the right frequency. So keep your eyes on how I shake it. So if I shake it really fast, right? So I have a high frequency, the short one goes. So that means I have to shake it a little slower here. So let me try to shake a little lower. See, so I'm shaking a little bit less. And so the little one's going still, but I can, I can just not shake too fast. I can get the middle one. And then if I shake really slow, I know that one's the hard one. But the idea is that as the wavelength gets longer, the frequency gets shorter, just like with our um, wave equation, right? That they're inverses of each other. So I wanted to have you share that. You can try this at home. I just have like a skewer that I found and I tied on some paper clips. You'll probably be more successful than I am or find your second grade um, friend who can do that with you. But that's known as resonance. So you're supposed to try to do it um, so these are some of the questions that we were supposed to have and basically how would this relate to making a building more earthquake resistant? So you're going to try that with an activity at home, I hope. Um, so thinking about natural frequency and things like that and if it's a taller building or a smaller building and what would happen. And that's it for these notes.